Hello everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. In this new series, you'll be learning how to make a casino shell game on Scratch 3. The game overall is going to consist of three different cups and a beach ball is going to be placed in one of them and you can see the cups shuffling continuously on the screen and when the cups are finally done shuffling, we can select one of the cups and if we got the answer right, we get a you win end screen and if we got the answer wrong, we get a you lose end screen. Now that's enough talk for the intro, let's get right into our code. Okay, so before I begin, I'm gonna have to ask you to download this particular file from the description below. And within the description, there'll be a link which will take you to a Google Drive attachment. And once you're there, you'd start to see the scratch file. So basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna save you all the hassle of downloading all the images one at a time and it will greatly speed up the coding process. So as you can see, uh, I've also set up the sizes to match perfectly so that you don't have to go through, you know, changing all of them. So this just speeds up the code um, by a lot. So in this video, I'll be getting into the beach ball sprite and that's pretty much all I will be coding. So um, you can hide the thumbnail because, you know, just seeing this, these three cups would give you probably a better idea of what's going on and then get into your beach ball. So let's start this off with a when green flag is clicked, which is when, you know, the code is going to start. And uh, when the green flag is clicked, I want the beach ball to go right to the front layer. Basically, it's gonna uh, be above these cups so that we can see it go up and down depending on wherever it chooses, okay? So after we're done with this, we can hide the beach ball. We will show it later, but we can hide it as of now. And next, we need to find out some way or some random process through which we have to choose one of these three uh, cups to be a part of. So uh, for that, I'm gonna set up a random variable. So you can click on make a new variable. I'm gonna call it random and then click okay. So uh, I'll hide that variable and here I will set random to and now we can get uh, into the operators category and find this block which says um, I believe pick random of 1 to 10 and you can change that to 1 to 3. Okay, so uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to have these uh, I'm going to have these three different cups having a particular number in them. So the extreme left is going to be cup negative 1 the center cup is going to be zero and the extreme right is going to be cup number one. So very simple, this is negative one, this is zero and this is one. So when I'm setting it from one to three, uh, in case it's one, I'm gonna set you know the position of the beach ball to be negative one. In case it's two, I'm gonna set the position of the beach ball to be zero. And in case it's three, I'm gonna set the beach ball's position to be one. So you might be wondering, you know, why not just use negative one to positive one? And you'd probably be right, you could do it that way. But I've just coded this uh, my, the first time like this. So I'm gonna follow along, um, you know, just by setting it random from one to three. So after you've uh, done this, you can grab a couple of equal to's from the operators. So first you can see if random is equal to one, then in this case, we need to make a new variable called position. So I'm gonna call it position all in caps because it's gonna be for all sprites. And here I will set the position to be negative one. Alternatively, if you use, you know, negative one to positive one, you can just set position to random and that should be pretty much it. But I'm gonna do it the little more roundabout way. So now we can duplicate this once more and we can see in case random is equal to two, set position to zero. And finally, if random is equal to three, then we can set position to one. And that will be pretty much all the code that we will need to uh, make sure that the beach ball has chosen one of these three cups in random. So once we're done with all of this, uh, what we can do is uh, get to the events category and broadcast message and wait. I'm gonna call this message a uh, show. I'll actually do this, you know, in normal sentence case. So I'll say a uh, show ball. So basically what's gonna happen is the ball is now going to go on top of one of those cups and then, you know, levitate up for a second and then come right back. So it's just gonna give a neat animation of showing the player where it's really at. So we've set a uh, show ball and wait so that we can continue the code after this animation is done. So what we can do is code the animation, you know, before we get into the uh, rest of the code. So we can say when we receive show ball, and uh, we basically need to go to three different positions or rather one position based on the three values of our position. 
So let's grab a couple of if else's. So the first case is if position is equal to negative one. And in this case, let me just change the random variable to position. And um, if this is true, then what we need to do is go to x negative 160 y0. And that is going to be the position of the left cup. The center cup is going to be x0 y0 and the right cup is going to be positive 160 y0. So in case, you know, position is negative one, then we do this. I'm going to duplicate this once more. Say if position is zero, then we go to x0, y0. And uh, we can just put this within the L. So if neither of these two are the case, then it automatically means that the beach ball has picked the right cup. So after we're done with this, now we can show the ball. And once we're, uh, once we're done showing the ball, we need it to levitate up and then come right back. So to do this, we can get to the motion category and we can make use of this uh, glide one second to, you know, X and Y position. So you can change this to, I guess about 0.75 seconds that works the best. And we'll not go to, you know, any specific X position, but we'll basically go on top of where we already are. So it's only our Y axis that's changing. And as a result, we can just keep our X position as it is. Now, as far as our Y is concerned, I'm just gonna go up 100, um, you know, uh, 100 scratch pixels in the y-axis you could uh, change that number depending on what you like but i think this works pretty decent so i'm going to keep it next i need to make sure that the ball goes right back to the cup so i basically have to do the opposite once again so this time i'll glide uh, 0.75 seconds to y back to zero and that will basically undo all the you know levitating that i have done and after this if i hide the ball is going to neatly disappear okay great so now that our animation is done uh, coding we can just test this out so as you can see we chose this one first and the ball went up and then came right back now once again if you click on the green flag all of this happens pretty much at random so we have really no way of knowing um, which exact cup it is in and as a result you know this game would work all the time you don't have to physically hard code a value for the ball uh, as the coder Anyway, so next we can um, continue with this code and here is where we're going to do the shuffling. So uh, we'll have two different cases of shuffling. The first one is where we'll shuffle the cups and the second one is where we just shuffle the position of the ball. Now as far as the shuffling of the ball is concerned, the ball isn't going to be physically moving to any location, but we just be changing, you know, this position based on where the ball is going to. Now on the other hand, when it comes to the cups, we'll make sure that the cups are physically moving to different locations and that's going to help us you know create a nice little animation but since the beach ball is hiding we don't have to do any of that so the exciting stuff will be in the next video when we get to the cups but as of now let's code in the beach ball so uh, i'm going to have 30 different shuffles so you can grab a repeat 10 and change that to be 30 that works pretty decent for me so um now i'm going to use that same random variable and what i'm going to do is i'm going to set random to once again pick random from one to five, okay? And this is because there are five different swaps that I can do. So if you look at this here, I can swap, um, you know, the left and the center, I can swap the center and the right, I can swap the left and the right, so that's three, uh, three different swaps, and I can also shift the cup, so I can move all of them by one and have this cup come right to the left, and I can move all of them to the left and have the left cup go to the right. So that's five total, you know, changes that I can do. And as a result, I have random that can take on five different values. So now I'm gonna have a series of if else's once again. Now, first I'm gonna say if random is equal to one, then we do a particular, you know, a particular swap. I guess we'll do the swaps first. So now you can head over to events and uh, grab a broadcast and wait. And it's very crucial to have this wait here and that's gonna play a crucial role in the cup. So don't mess this up. Make sure you have this um, message correctly. So I'm gonna call this uh, first message. It's gonna be left in the center. So it's gonna be negative one to uh, negative one to one, okay? Just so that we understand what's really going on. Um, next, I'm gonna see if random is equal to two. In this case, I'm going to swap, uh, I'm going to swap the left and the right. Okay, so that means, uh, okay, I just realized I made a mistake here. So um, what I'm going to do here is say new message, and I'm going to say negative one, two, zero. 
because remember that I said, um, remember I said that this was left and the center. So as a result, we'd want a uh, zero and negative one to be swapping and not positive one. So negative one to positive one would be the left and the right swapping, which is the whole point of, you know, random equal to two. So next let's go to random equal to three. So in case random is equal to three, then we need to do a completely different thing which is swapping the center and the right. So in this case, let me say swap new message zero to one. Fairly straightforward. Um, next, I'm gonna see if, oops, next I'm gonna see if random is equal to four. And if random is equal to four, then I will just say plus one because here I'm gonna shift to the right. So plus, no, plus one, there we go. And last, if random is equal to five, then all I'm gonna do is say minus one, and that means we're all shifting to the left. So this is pretty much all we need within the script as of now, the rest of the code is just gonna be in the end screen and a little bit when we get to the cups. But now we can um, move on to the next part of our code, which is changing the position based on these messages. All right, let's start off with the first one. So the first case is negative one to zero. So let's say when I receive message negative one to zero. In this case, uh, basically we, uh, we are gonna have two different cases. So first we can check if uh, the position is equal to a one and let me quickly type that out. So if not one, sorry, negative one. So change this to position and say if position equal to negative one, then. So the first case is, is if the ball is in negative one and it goes to basically zero, or the second case is if the ball is at zero and then it goes to negative one. So if it's the first case and the ball is currently at negative one, then basically we wanna swap the position to be zero. On the, uh, on the other hand, in case the ball position is equal to zero, then what we'll have to do is we will change the position to not, um, not one, but negative one. So that's pretty much all you need within this first message. There we go. So next we can get into the uh, next one, which is a negative one to one. Okay, in this case, first, if the position is negative one, then we need to switch it to positive one because we're switching, you know, left and right. And finally, if the position is positive one, then we switch the position to negative one, basically just the reverse. Um, next we can get into the, okay, let me do it down. So next we can get into this uh, third case here. So in this case, we're gonna say zero to one. And once again, if it is zero, we switch it to one. And if it is one, then we switch it to zero. Now, lastly, we need to um, do the switches. And this is probably, you know, the most complicated, but it's very simple anyway. So now we can say um, uh, plus one. And here we'll have three different position checks. Okay, so let me duplicate this once here, duplicate this once more within the else and put the third if within the else of the second if. So uh, when we're doing plus one, if the position is negative one, then we set the position to zero. If the position is zero, then we set the position to positive one. And finally, if the position is positive one, then we need to go to negative one. Fairly straightforward. Now let me duplicate this once more. And this is going to be the fifth and the final one. So this is gonna be when we receive switch to the left or negative one. And in this case, if position is equal to negative one, then we need to set position to positive one because the left is gonna go like, uh, the left cup is going to go like this. If the position is equal to zero, then we set the position to negative one, which is the left cup. And finally, if the position is equal to one, then we set the position to zero, which is the center. And that is going to be pretty much it. If we have all this in place, then our position is gonna be constantly changing with our updates in the ball's position. And I'm gonna end this video here. Obviously at this point, we don't have much of an output, but in the next videos or maybe the next two videos when we start to change the cups and when we finally select one of the cups, you'll start to see how this works out completely. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.